Welcome to Worship with Holy Love Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about forgiveness, how God calls us to forgive one another, and how we can actually live that out in our lives. We're also talking about what the meaning of forgiveness is. As we begin worship, today as we do each week, we ask God to forgive us of our sins, and we receive confidently the forgiveness of our sins. Join me as we pray. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, who walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways, assure us again of your love, and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Corinthians, the fifth chapter. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to reconcile to God for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The 
reading from the 32nd Psalm. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and who, in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I, account, I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayers to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are, hiding, you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are turning, Lord, to hear you. You are merciful and kind, slow to The Holy Gospel according to the 15th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property through dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed his pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. His father ran to him and put his arms around him and kissed him. And then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you and before heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to him, Quickly, quickly, bring out the robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was out in the field. And when he came back and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he, the elder brother, became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, 
For all these years, I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your commands. Yet, you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is one of the best loved, best known, most referenced parables of all the Christendom and even outside of the Christian world. I mean, come on, it put the strange word prodigal into our everyday vocabulary. Painters, especially during Renaissance in Europe, loved painting images from this parable. And whether it was because it gave them an excuse to draw a bunch of drunk, rowdy party goers, no one knows. But no doubt, the parable of the prodigal son has become part of our subconscious as a culture. And more so as Christians, it's on the forefront, our conscience, mind. Remember though what a parable is. We talked about this last week. It's a fictional story meant to convey a deeper meaning about what God is like, and therefore about what we as followers of God are to be like. So just like last week with the parable of the fig tree, each of these three main characters has traditionally been ascribed to major groups. The father has been said to represent God, the creator. The younger, repentant, prodigal, wayward son is meant to represent all of us, and the elder son is meant to represent the religious elite, but is it ever that simple? Because now, while such a traditional reading isn't wrong, but here at Holy Love, we have said that one of our core values is that we're faithfully curious, which means we explore our faith and how it manifests in the world in which we live. So simple answers, while they're nice, we like to go a little deeper. So with the father in the prodigal son parable representing God and the wayward son representing us is comfortable because we've all sinned. I've talked about that a lot. We acknowledge our sin. We ask God for forgiveness. But what do we do with that elder son? We just kind of ignore him, right? <laughs> we ignore the whole aspect of, oh, you have to forgive one another as siblings of the same God. We like to instead ascribe it off to the religious elite, these unnamed people that are from a previous time and place. Or maybe we label them as the other denominations, <gasps> the other Christian denominations. Henry Nouwen examined the interplay of these three characters of the parable in his book, Return of the Prodigal Son, A Story of Homecoming. It's a great book, I really recommend it, quick read. But in it, Nouwen talks about phases in his life and phases in our lives where he was like the father, welcoming people with open arms, where he was like the younger and wayward son, turning away from God, and where he was like the elder son, refusing forgiveness to others. When I first read it, I felt a little bit sacrilegious because what do you mean that I am, and therefore we are, at times to be like the father in this parable? That we need to be waiting with open arms for those who have hurt us, who wished us dead even? That's the kind of forgiveness only possible by God, not by humans. After all, to err is human, to forgive is divine, according to either Alexander Pope or Plutarch. So then that quote definitely lets me off the hook to forgive other people, because, I mean, it's something that only God can do. God's the only one that can forgive. Oh... Darn it. But remember God in three persons, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit in each of us, moving each of us towards a somewhat more God-aligned life. A more God-aligned life which involves forgiveness. Forgiveness of others. <sighs> it's so hard. Sometimes we do the opposite and we think that forgiveness has to be this super intense, illogical thing. We think of grand examples like Pope John Paul II, who very publicly forgave the man who tried to kill him. Yeah, that's an example of forgiveness. 
Or we think of Representative Jim Lewis, who said that the people leading the racist counter movement he fought against deserved forgiveness. Everyday forgiveness, though, that's out of reach. That's just not something we need to talk about or ever talk. Last week, I mentioned how impatient I am. <laughs> and 10 years ago, when I first read Nowen's book, I also really, really stunk at forgiving others. I'm serious, I really stunk at it. This was when I was teaching high school. And so the kids were easy to forgive because, oh, they're kids, their hormones are crazy, their home life is weird. But my coworkers, my friends who are now meeting the people that they'd eventually marry, my own family, nah. We were equals, so therefore they should have known better. Developmentally, they had no reason to be mean or to hurt me. There was this late night talk show back in Chicago. They'd come up on weeknights during the summer and I'd catch them on school breaks. And it was called To Forgive or Forget. The whole premise was that someone would come on the show with so much guilt for something that they had done or said from years prior, could be more than 10 years. And the show's producers would go find the person they had wronged. And then the host of the show would explain what happened between the two people. And the final finale, the end of each episode was, did the wronged party forgive or forget? The choice was to forgive and therefore be in a continued relationship with the parties or to forget and to leave each other alone forever. This show is how I came to understand forgiveness because either you let bygones be bygones and always be in relationship or you flat out ignore the other party. So back in my life, there were people that I had to be in relationship with, like my coworkers, my family, my friends, myself, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't forgive them because I couldn't ignore them. And I thought forgiveness was either totally everything's fine or forget it, we're not doing anything together. This is some major elder son energy, right? I knew I needed to forgive, but I couldn't figure out how. When I read Nowen's book, and I thought about how, yeah, I am the elder son at times, we all are, and how I'm missing out on the party that the father is throwing, missing out on a chance for some crazy tales, and on what my entire role has been this time, because it hasn't been some martyrdom. Instead, it's been one of partnership with God. Notice, again, the elder son's complaint to his dad as he's throwing a hissy fit outside the party. Why are you so happy that that son of yours has come back? Haven't I been faithful? Haven't I labored endlessly for you and your causes? Haven't I done everything you wanted? That son of yours. The elder son doesn't even refer to the wayward one as his brother. He has completely othered him, cut him off, ended any relationship. This is so easy to do, especially in our lives. Unfriend on Facebook. Ignore the person at coffee hour. Give niceties about the weather if you have to interact. But then notice the father's response. Son, the father says, an immediate connection. Son, everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate because your brother, yes, your brother, is back miraculously. But that's where the parable ends. Jesus doesn't conclude with what happened between the two brothers. It's left open in this tension and intrepidation. It's left open because this is where all of us live. We live in this, will we forgive others or will we hold it against them forever and ever? Once I learned that forgiveness isn't binary, it's not an either or, but a spectrum, a continued move towards selfless love and community. Forgiveness became easier for me to practice. All right, so I may not fully forgive my old boss for all the stuff she did, but I could at least not be mad at her for it. After living that out for a while, I no longer wish bad things would happen to her. I actually want my old boss to be happy. So yeah, the comfortable answer, we are all the prodigal son. We all leave God at times. We all misuse our eternal life and the endless love and forgiveness of Christ. That's fine, and that's good and true. But today, I want us to also consider how we are the elder son. That that repulsion or rudeness you felt at the older brother's response to his brother's return, that's the spirit moving within us, the spirit moving within you. 
nudging you forward to say, ah, don't be like this. Don't end all these tensions and relationships in perpetuity. We're called to learn from the elder son and work on how we forgive one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Forgive our sins as we forgive you. Taught us, Lord, to pray, but you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. How can your pardon reach and bless thy unforgiving heart that broods on wrongs and will not let old bitterness depart. In blazing light your cross reveals the truth we dimly Let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uniting with the Church of God throughout the world, let us pray to our Lord. Good, gracious, holy, and forgiving Lord, thank you for all your mercy. Continue to guide us in your ways. Teach us of your love. Soften our hearts to forgive one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, as we teach our kids to forgive, we ask that you would teach us the ways of forgiveness. We pray especially for our youth in our preschool and kindergarten. We pray for our teachers and staff and our families that called the preschool their home. Help us to continue reaching out to them and to minister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Lord, we pray for all decision makers. We ask for your unprecedented peace to come into our world. We pray for an end to war and violence. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. Sustain them with your love. Empower them with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay these prayers before your throne of grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another online, in your household, however.
Thank you for being part of Holy Love's worshiping community. I ask that in this time, we respond to God with a thankful heart. As you give, we are able to continue our ministries, including this recorded service. You can give online via our PayPal link on our website. You can give via the QR code seen on the screen, or you can send a check into the church. However you choose to financially give, we really appreciate it. It helps us continue spreading the mission and gospel of Christ. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering. Join me in an offering prayer to God. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Jesus, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your son and your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all peoples. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us in these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. 
Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. United into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. All are welcome at Christ's table. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May Almighty God, the one who forgives, redeems, and blesses us into new life, lead you now and forever in the path of forgiveness. Amen. Okay.
peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.